If you've done anything at all on Ethereum lately, you've probably noticed that the high gas fees have made the network almost unusable. Once upon a time, the side effects of high gas fees were only felt by those using DeFi protocols and decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, where a simple swap could cost you over $100 in gas. Now, even centralized exchanges are charging upwards of $40 in fees to withdraw ERC20 stablecoins like USDT and USDC. I also recently read a comment from one of my viewers who said that they paid over $120 in gas just to send their Aave tokens to another Ethereum wallet address. That crosses a line. I can't stand by any longer while my dear viewers get shafted by Ethereum gas fees. So today, I'm going to explain how Ethereum gas works, how you can reduce gas fees, and how you can even profit from these rising gas costs. Help is on the way. Before I set the stage, I need to make sure we're on the same page. If you're here for financial advice, I'm afraid you won't be getting any. That's because I am not a financial advisor, and nothing that comes out of this mouth is financial or investment advice. This video is for educational purposes only, and if your financial advisor is lacking in that department, well, be sure to send them this video to help them out. Sharing is caring after all. If this is your first time seeing my face, then allow me to show you around my space. My name is Guy, and I am the lead detective here at the Coin Bureau. I do whatever it takes to bring you the quality crypto content you yearn to taste. Cryptocurrencies, DeFi protocols, exchanges, news, NFTs, and market analysis are just a few of the items on my bottomless menu. So if your hunger for crypto is as big as mine, subscribe and ping that notification bell to get a chime so that you always see these videos on time. And speaking of time, I've left a few timestamps below that you can use to make sure you don't get lost. It has happened before. Don't ask me how. Anyways, I think that's enough hot air for now. Right, let's step on that gas. Like every other cryptocurrency, the Ethereum network has transaction fees known as gas. Ethereum gas fees are measured in a unit called a gigaway, or GUE for short. Way is the smallest denomination of the ETH cryptocurrency. One way represents one quintillionth of an ETH, and one GUE is one billionth of an ETH. These gas fees are paid to Ethereum miners to ensure that your transaction gets processed. In other words, to ensure that transaction is included in the next Ethereum block. Now, it's often said that Ethereum miners set the gas fees, but this isn't entirely correct. Ethereum miners vote to set something called the gas limit, which is how much gas can be included in each Ethereum block. Back in the day, this gas limit was around 3 million GUE per Ethereum block. Today, the gas limit is over 12 million GUE. If you're wondering why miners would increase the gas limit, it's because it allows the Ethereum network to squeeze in more transactions per block. This theoretically makes the Ethereum network slightly cheaper and faster for users without sacrificing transaction fee profits for Ethereum miners. The problem is that increasing the gas limit also raises the barrier to entry for new Ethereum miners and Ethereum nodes, which threatens the decentralization of the Ethereum network. Increasing the gas limit also doesn't change the fact that there is limited transaction space in each Ethereum block. Even with a higher gas limit, if the Ethereum network is busy enough, it means you're going to be paying a premium to get the Ethereum miners to include your transaction in the next Ethereum block. A few hundred GUE in gas fees isn't much when the price of ETH is low, but when ETH is pushing past new all-time highs like it is now, it can cost a pretty penny in dollar terms. Naturally, the more complex the transaction, the more Ethereum gas you're going to need to pay to get that transaction included in the next block. It currently costs hundreds of dollars in ETH to interact with most DeFi protocols. This is essentially limited Ethereum DeFi to people with very deep pockets, aka whales. Now that said, there are many ways you can reduce these insane Ethereum gas fees. Almost every single Ethereum wallet in existence lets you set your own personal gas limit before sending a transaction. 
The gas limit you see in wallets like my Ether Wallet and MetaMask is different than the gas limit set by miners in each Ethereum block I mentioned a few moments ago. Your personal gas limit is essentially the maximum amount of GUI that you're willing to pay for that transaction to go through. A lot of Ethereum wallets will give you the option to send your transaction at a slow speed, regular speed, or fast speed. Now, believe it or not, most of the time, the gas fees they give you for each of these transaction speeds are not always up to date. Now, that's no fault of their own. The amount of gas you need to get a transaction through actually fluctuates from block to block. That's why the first thing you should do before sending an Ethereum transaction from a wallet is to check a website like ETH Gas Station to see the most up-to-date gas fees. Pro tip, you can download their browser extension plugin so you always have those gas fees handy. Now, once you know what the actual fee is for the transaction you want to send, you can manually enter the amount of GUI you're willing to pay for that transaction in the Ethereum wallet you're using. If you want to go one step further, you can check out a cool website called TX Street, which actually shows you how those gas fees are changing from block to block in real time. Setting your own custom gas limits using these tools can reduce your Ethereum gas costs by up to 30%. Now, I'll leave links to both of these in the description. Another similar way to reduce gas fees is to transact during Ethereum's quiet hours. These are between 8 and 11 p.m. UTC, which is 3 to 6 p.m. for you Yanks on the East Coast. Ethereum gas costs can be up to 50% cheaper during that time frame. Before you even make an Ethereum transaction, you should be asking yourself if it really needs to be done right this minute. Unless you're executing a mind-melting arbitrage trade using a flash loan, sticking to the bare minimum gas limit you see on ETH gas station during Ethereum's quiet hours is probably the way to go. Just be careful not to put too little gas or else your transaction could get stuck. Now this is actually a lot worse than it sounds because you'll not be able to send any other transaction from that wallet until that stuck transaction has been pushed through with additional gas or reversed. If you decide to brute force the transaction with additional gas, you have to make sure you're using at least 10% more than the previous fee, regardless of the current gas costs. If for some reason you've changed your mind and want to reverse that transaction, you have to find the failed transaction on Etherscan, navigate to the additional details, and find the nonce number for that transaction. Then you simply send zero Ethereum to your own Ethereum address using the current gas price with the nonce number as reference. This will replace the stuck transaction, effectively cancelling it and making it possible to send new transactions again. Speeding up or cancelling stuck transactions can all be easily done through MetaMask. If you did not use MetaMask and your transaction is stuck, I'll leave a link to a guide that you can use to help you in the description. If you want to save gas while simultaneously profiting from high gas fees on Ethereum, then gas tokens are the way to go. The first gas token was invented in late 2017 by a group of blockchain researchers from various top-tier universities around the world, including Cornell and Stanford. Gas tokens take advantage of a function on Ethereum called the, quote, storage refund. This is basically where the Ethereum network refunds a portion of the ETH used for gas in a smart contract when some of the data inside of it are deleted. The storage refund function exists to motivate developers to free up space on the Ethereum blockchain, which stores all the data generated by smart contracts. Gas tokens are essentially junk data inside a dummy smart contract that can be destroyed in exchange for Ethereum gas. The basic idea behind gas tokens is that you mint them when the cost of gas is low and then burn them to reduce gas costs by 50% when the cost of gas is high. Gas tokens can also be sold for a profit instead on decentralized exchanges such as Uniswap. And funnily enough, gas tokens are a big part of why many cryptocurrency wallets that used to offer Ethereum gas or gas subsidies stopped doing so in the fall of 2020. Clever users realized that they could use the free Ethereum gas being provided by these wallets to mint gas tokens that could be sold for a handsome profit further down the road. Pretty damn smart if I do say so myself. Although the original gas token is unaudited and seems to have some sketchy tokenomics, 
an improved version of the original gas token called the Qi gas token was created by DEX aggregator 1inch in June of 2020. The Qi gas token has pulled an impressive 20x since the fall and continues to rise in accordance with Ethereum's gas fees. The Qi gas token can be minted using ETH on the 1inch exchange, and you can mint up to 140 Qi at a time. Now, before you run off and fill up your bags, be aware that minting these gas tokens ironically requires a lot of gas. To just break even on the minting, the dollar value of Qi would theoretically have to grow by more than 50%. Luckily, you can set limit orders on one inch to automatically sell that Qi when it's the higher price you're shooting for. If you're buying Qi to save on gas costs, you can use it on the one inch exchange or Curve Finance to save up to 40% on gas. If you need to use gas tokens in other DeFi protocols, then you'll have to use the original gas token. I'll leave a link to an article to help you with that in the description if you need it. And if you're unfamiliar with 1inch, then I suggest you pop open a new tab using that link up in the top right and learn about this amazing protocol. The last thing you can do to save on Ethereum gas fees is to use a layer 2 scaling solution. The most relevant example here is probably Loopring. In addition to being a decentralized exchange, Loopring also allows you to transfer ETH and LRC to other users with zero fees. Getting your funds into Loopring does cost gas, however, so whether you use this solution really depends on your endgame. If you're constantly transferring Ethereum based funds to other people, Loopring is probably your best bet. You could load up your account in advance when Ethereum fees are low and then send those assets later with no gas. Loopring could also come in handy when the time comes to sell. We all know how centralized exchanges start to experience <clears throat> technical issues when the price of Bitcoin or Ethereum starts to moon. On Loopring, you can trade wrapped Bitcoin and Ethereum for stablecoins like USDC and USDT using their AMM, and I doubt those trading pairs will have any outages when the market really starts to move. You also won't pay an arm and a leg in gas for a swap like you would on a layer 1 DEX like Uniswap. Just be aware that the Loopring AMM doesn't have nearly the same volume as a centralized exchange, meaning you could experience some slippage with these trading pairs. If you want to learn more about Loopring, well, I implore you to open up a new tab using that link in the top right. To wrap things up, I want to give you a few updates about EIP-1559. For those unfamiliar, Ethereum Improvement Proposal 1559 would set a base fee for Ethereum transactions and burn those fees out of circulation. Some of you may remember that I noted earlier this year that the deflationary pressure of those fee burns could supercharge Ethereum's price in 2021. I also noted that an Ethereum developer mentioned they would be implementing EIP-1559 soon. Yet here we are almost one month later. This seems to be because Ethereum miners aren't exactly happy about EIP-1559. To say they're making a killing from these gas fees is really an understatement, and they're arguing that EIP-1559 is a way of enriching speculators and investors. Given that investors like Grayscale are dying for EIP-1559 to pass, I can see their point. A recent tweet by Ethereum developer Tim Bako suggests that they're still pressing forward with EIP-1559 and that we will see it, quote, ready to be considered for mainnet sometime in March. He also linked to a document where you can keep track of the progress on EIP-1559. Now, if I understood correctly, there are only two steps left before they start testing it. I also couldn't help but notice an item below the community outreach subheading, which reads, quote, outreach to miners to better understand their objections to 1559 and stance if it is to be deployed on mainnet. Let's just hope that's not the thing that makes or breaks this much needed upgrade to Ethereum. There's no denying that Ethereum gas fees have been too damn high, and it seems like they're only going to get worse in the coming months. This isn't just because the network is going to get busier. It's also because there are still way too many people who don't understand how Ethereum gas works. I can't tell you the number of times I blindly set the highest transaction fee in Ethereum wallets like Metamask when sending a transaction back when I was still a crypto noob. 
I bet there are thousands of other Ethereum users who are needlessly doing this for every transaction, either because they're impatient or because they simply don't know any better. If everyone knew how to set the appropriate gas limit for the types of transactions they're making, maybe the gas fees would be substantially lower than they are now. While I'm a huge fan of gas tokens as a concept, I can't say I've ever used any of them in my transactions. A 50% discount on gas fees is great, but if I'm still paying a few hundred dollars for a swap after that discount, I don't see much point in using them. I also can't help but notice that the Qi gas token seems to be fairly inflated due to the speculation we're seeing as retail investors pour in. By contrast, I think there's a very good reason why Layer 2s like Loopring, Matic Network, and XDAI have been performing well over the past few weeks. Even if EIP-1559 is coming, the track record of Ethereum's developers suggests we're going to be waiting well past March until we see the sparks fly. Until then, Layer 2s will continue to gain traction. Also, I don't think that Ethereum miners will actually strike down EIP-1559. I think they're aware that if Ethereum becomes unusable, then those juicy transaction fees will disappear along with the users paying them. Moreover, Ethereum 2.0 is slowly but surely coming together. This will make proof-of-work mining obsolete as Ethereum 2.0 uses proof-of-stake mining instead. My only question is, how much longer can this go on for? There's no mixture of the tricks I used in this video to protect against the $1,000 gas fees we will see if and when Ethereum hits 5 or 10k during this bull market. Just remember to move those funds around well before you decide to sell them and do it at a time when the network is relatively less bloated. Forewarned is forearmed after all. Well, if you've made it this far, then I'm going to go ahead and assume that you enjoyed this video. If my assumptions are correct, then smash that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already, and ping that notification bell to stay up to date during this bull market. If you really want to stay on top of everything that's going on, then join my Coin Bureau Insider Telegram channel to get daily cryptocurrency updates and insights. I promise that it's free of spam, unlike other crypto telegram channels. You can also subscribe to my weekly newsletter, where I give you the rundown on everything that you need to know to maximize your crypto gains. You'll even get a sneak peek at my personal portfolio. If you've got a few extra sats lying around, well, consider supporting the channel by buying some apparel from the Coin Bureau merch store. You'll find lots of designs, but limited quantities, so do get them while they're hot. That's all for now, my friends. Hoddle on, stack sats, and avoid those shitcoins. Toodaloo.